Does anybody is already familiar with the data classes? Do, 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 do you know what it is? Okay, some people. Um, uh, data classes are, are a new feature of uh, Python 3.7. Uh, so uh, I guess maybe this is one of the reasons not ma so many people are aware of them. Having said that, there are already uh, there is a backward compatibility for 3.6. You should uh, pip install data classes and you get it. And everything I will show you, you can use uh, today or tomorrow uh, immediately. So um, <clears throat> uh, before I start, um, as, I, as I was described, my name is Eli. Um, I'm the CTO for RavTech. Uh, that's um, um, an organization uh, hiring and training uh, ultra-orthodox people, uh, ultra-orthodox men. So we, they, we teach them uh, pro uh, computer sciences. And then they are programming, so we are a software house. Um, and uh, obviously we do Python as one of our main languages. So what we'll talk about is uh, some background about uh, classes. I guess everybody know what the class is. Uh, then we'll show how to do that using data classes, which is a wonderful step forward uh, to simplify and ease the process of creating classes. Uh, I'll talk a little about type hints. Uh, I actually uh, was here uh, two years ago uh, talking uh, a presentation about type hints. Um, and then uh, we'll move into data classes. I hope I will have some time uh, to show it in actual code because we started with a delay. Um, I'll talk a little about uh, more advanced features which make, uh, make it even more powerful. And uh, if there will be time, I'll try to say a few words about name tuple and uh, utters, which are alternatives to data classes that, were, that are already available and can be used. So let's start. Uh, the thing about uh, data classes is what we want to do, where we want to spend our time. Basically, uh, there, are, there are stuff that we do in coding which is boring. Uh, um, uh, last, uh, last year I spoke about hypotheses which creates uh, test cases for us and saves us time to do uh, a lot of things. And again, data classes is one of these stuff that enables us to remove boring stuff and focus on the more exciting or uh, important things we want to do. Uh, so what in this case is saved is boilerplate, and I'll explain. So let's take an example. This example is exactly from the PEP um, about data classes. Uh, so uh, let's take an inventory item. So we have a name for it, we have a price for each unit, and we probably have some quantity uh, for this. Again, this is just a simple example. Uh, obviously, uh, having this data, we can calculate the total cost of this specific uh, inventory item. So what it would look like uh, when we uh, try to do that, uh, we'll probably uh, have a class and um, we'll have some uh, init method uh, that would initialize it, basically, uh, with all the uh, features. So uh, you'll probably see code like this or similar to this in many, many uh, classes. I don't know if yours or written by someone else, but that's uh, a very typical uh, boilerplate. We want to create uh, uh, an instance. We have to initialize it. We have uh, to pass the parameters for it, we actually copy them into the uh, self or the instance, and then we have the object. And suppose we want to print it. Um, if you try just to print it, you get something like uh, inventory item uh, with its address or something uh, similar like that. Uh, if we want a nicer print, uh, we can have a wrapper or a, a string uh, function that will make it nicer. So again, we have to write some code in order to do that. And this repeats with many, many other features we typically want to have uh, for a class. So, um, <clears throat> uh, and of course, if we want to add the method, we just need to write the method, and that's uh, what we really wanted to do. That's the only method we wanted. We wanted the, uh, cl our class to have three uh, fields and one method. So uh, wouldn't it be much more easier and fun uh, if we could do only focus on that? Uh, one more thing is uh, when uh, we have uh, a class that we create uh, 
Uh, typically, uh, the function uh, equal, for those who are aware of it, uh, would look like this. So if we take, uh, you see there two lines, uh, create two inventory items, which are identical, basically, have the same data. Would item one be equal to item two? Who knows? Who says it will be equal? Okay. Who says it's not going to be equal? Okay. So uh, most programmers here are more experienced and know that these items are not equal at all. When testing two, class, two instances for equality, what, uh, what is tested is basically the address of each one of them, and they have different addresses, although they point to the same data. So the data is identical, and I think intuitively we would expect them to be equal, but that's not the case. And again, uh, trying to sort them, uh, if we have a few of them, uh, anybody guess what would happen? Um, I'll save your time, and if we have time, I can show it later. It would fail because there is no comparison function that says which one is bigger or smaller than the other one. Uh, although, in uh, some cases, we can have some default that makes sense. So uh, I would expect, for example, uh, to sort them by the name of the item. So uh, this kind of things, uh, and again, uh, trying to make them uh, a key would make uh, quite a, something which is unexpected uh, because for usage as a key will get, again, the address, the ID of the object and not the object itself, which is very, very strange. So um, we talked a little about the normal classes. Uh, I'll just add one more slide talking about the type hints. Uh, in classes uh, today, in, uh, starting from 3.6, it's very simple to add type hints, which make our code more readable and easier to understand. And uh, you see here in the yellow uh, the type hints, which makes our code easier. So again, that's the same uh, class as before. How would it be, look like if we have a data class? So. Uh, uh, we have uh, to import data class, and then all we have to do is actually define the fields and add the function. That's all. And uh, by doing this, the rest of the code is generated for us. Not only that, it is generated in a better default than what class provided us beforehand. And I'll give some examples. But basically, you can see that our work becomes much, much easier. Uh, we can have the type ins as well, um, and we can uh, do this. Uh, we can also have uh, defaults. So in this case, I added a, a default value for the quantity, but not for the other uh, fields. So uh, again, database, data class can have uh, default values. By the way, this is also possible uh, with the regular class, but it has to be within the lines defining, and here it's very clear to see uh, the defaults. So what do we get? Uh, the, the code generated by uh, the data classes, uh, the function in it, uh, which is very similar to the one we had before, with the defaults, copying each field to its place. So it's very, very simple, very straightforward, and it saves us the boilerplate, this, the time we spent doing something which is practically always the same. We just have a list of variables that we want to copy. Uh, we have a default wrapper, and hence, also a different string. So if we string this, we get, instead of some index of address in the memory, uh, we get something more reasonable, like a description of what it is. Uh, in our case, it will be inventory item, uh, book 2.2, or something like that, which is easier to read and understand. We also get uh, a lot of functions, I'll be describing these in details, that enables us to compare uh, the uh, two items uh, in a way which is more similar to what we are used to do, uh, what we expect. If we talked about the example earlier of whether item one was equal to item two, in this case, they will be equal. And obviously, we can sort them because uh, we, uh, these functions are also uh, the, these are all functions. And all these are done for us behind the scenes, so we don't have to spend effort, and it's done with good defaults. So let's see uh, a little. Uh, more uh, options that we have. Uh, previously, I showed just the default. I said data class and a list of fields. Now you can see that uh, this data class can be uh, also configured if we want to add more features. For example, 
uh, whether or not we want to have an init functions. We can define a, a data class with the fields, but these fields will not be initialized and there won't be any init functions. We can write our own. So we still keep everything we had before. We can define all the fields and still get whatever we used to do before. And again, uh, this goes for all, all these features you see, like wrapper and equal. Uh, whether or not we want the order, the values you see here are the defaults. So uh, it's very, uh, for example, by default, there will not be an order. Uh, so less than and greater than will not be defined. But if we set it to true, we can uh, get, uh, by default, some, uh, our object will be able to be sorted. Um, Frozen, for those who don't know, is something that uh, basically uh, the object will not be able, it will be unmutable. It will not be able to, we will not be able to change it. Uh, so again, uh, if we want to make uh, unmutable, if we want to make frozen objects, we can do that. And obviously these can be used for hashing and for other purposes uh, that we want. Getting into one of the functions as an example that was generated, uh, I said that it makes uh, good uh, defaults. Uh, there was a lot of thought spent into how to make these defaults. And you can see that uh, uh, the, the default equal function verifies that uh, we compare between two similar objects. Uh, so uh, the other class should be the same as us. And then there is a comparison. And obviously we can uh, have something to uh, replace it. We don't necessarily uh, have to use the default. But again, uh, we want to compare apples with apples, and we don't want to mix apples uh, with oranges. So we have to see what we do. And again, uh, the defaults keep us safe. The, the default is for uh, safety and um, readability and simplicity. So everything is simple. So um, these are uh, more like uh, details for each of the uh, data class parameters that we can configure our class uh, to do uh, what we uh, exactly want. For example, whether or not we want uh, an init. Uh, I think I went through this before, and you can see uh, all the examples here uh, with a little more details. Uh, so again, uh, in this case, uh, the Dunder equal function is the one that helps us uh, work with, uh, uh, make item one equal item two. And by using a data class, we get equality, we can sort, and we can use uh, hashing. Uh, there's a whole discussion why it's called unsafe hash. If people want to go into the details, uh, they can read about it. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's not really unsafe. It's just you have to understand a little about hashing if you want to use this feature. Um, in addition to that, for each field, we can configure it separately. So I talked so far about configuration of the entire da data class. Now uh, there's a, a configuration per field. So we can have a default value. We can have a default factory. Uh, well, we can have whether or not it should be shown as part of the string that is generated, or we, should, or we would prefer hiding it and show a partial uh, data of the data class. And again, you can see all these uh, features. So for example, um, if we take uh, in this example, uh, X is defined as usual. Uh, y will not be shown when we, have, uh, when we string something or print the item. We will not see Y and will not see Z. Uh, Z by default will have a 10. And T will be initialized into an empty list. Um, you should be careful not to use a list because then all uh, items will use the same list. Uh, that's a known issue with the Python. And again, uh, data class uh, implementation saves us from that. Another thing is that uh, we have a, a field which is not initialized. We remove it from the initialization. So it, we, it's, it's, uh, it's a field in the class. And uh, because uh, we want to implement it uh, some other way, in this example, uh, data class supports uh, a function called post init to initialize these kind of variables. And you can see uh, its initialization is very simple. And again, 
we don't have to deal with the details, we just have to say what we want to do and, and make it happen. Another important feature is inheritance. Uh, basically, inheritance is saved. Not only it's saved, uh, it could be uh, uh, that, uh, for example, in this example, X is a different type of, uh, the, of the father uh, or the parent class. And again, uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to really dive into the details, but uh, basically uh, this can be done and you can see um, an, the example generated for, for uh, the class C. So uh, we also have uh, a lot of helper functions. For those who want to use the, the uh, class as a, a dictionary or as a tuple, there's as dict, as tuple. Uh, we can replace uh, a single item, uh, a single field value of an item, etc. So you can see all these examples. And uh, once again, once you start using data classes, its usage becomes very simple and very easy. Um, for those who are aware of name tuple, uh, name tuples are basically tuples which have a name per each field of them. So, uh, for example, if we take uh, uh, the date point, uh, it, obviously we believe the first one to be a year, so we can write uh, date.year or something like that. Uh, however, name tuples uh, are comparable to any other tuples because they are basically tuples, so we have, don't have real sense of their uh, typing. And there's uh, more, uh, okay, because I have only a few minutes left, I'll just say that uh, you can see here a lot of issues that data classes resolve successfully, uh, where name tuple are less uh, uh, appropriate. Uh, another um, uh, example is this, uh, name tuple might be broken might bro code. If we add, uh, 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 for example, a second to, to, a, to a structure that is hour and minute, then once we, uh, the, our code might break where someone is breaking the tuple into values. Uh, another uh, library, a very famous library is Attributes, Atters. Uh, it's an excellent library and uh, basically it's widely used. Uh, it, it was considered as a candidate for data classes and eventually uh, Guido van Rusum decided not to. There's a, a bunch of reasons, you can see some of them here, uh, but the concepts are the same and um, if you are used to them, it's, it's a good library. Uh, just uh, to summarize before questions, uh, that's the Zen of Python, I hope everybody is familiar with it. Um, and I think one of the things uh, about data classes is that so many stuff on the Zen of Python are really there because it's a, it's a beautiful code. Uh, it's very explicit about what we want to do. Having said that, it's very simple and uh, very uh, easy. And again, uh, we only say what we want to happen and the rest is happening for us. So um, I strongly recommend using it. I think once we start doing it, it becomes very easy, and again, it's available in Python 3.6 by using uh, pip install data classes. That's all you have to do, and maybe uh, read the little documentation. So we have a, a few minutes for questions. I'll be happy to take. Yes, please. The question were, are there any issues with using data classes or any caveats, any problems? Uh, not that I'm aware of. It's, uh, I'm using it in 3.6 and 3.7, both have mature, work perfectly fine, I didn't encounter any bug or issue or something. So, um, the answer is no, no known uh, issues. Okay, um, and that, that's why I said you can use it tomorrow because um, I'm using it for a long time now and uh, perfectly okay. Yes? Oh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, the question was, how does um, a data class uh, sort things because it has a few fields. Which field is sorted first, then second? Uh, the answer is very simple. It's the order of fields uh, in the definition, like uh, we saw tuples. So basically it's like, for sorting purpose, this behaves like tuples, and then, like you compare tuples, the first field, once, uh, if you have uh, two uh, items with the same first field, then it's sorted by the second, and it's the order of definition. So, okay. So thank you very much, everybody.